vlogmas day i'm not sure we are officially one month post for those who don't know who hasn't been keeping up and is nosy i got 360 light bulb which is where they do light bulb all over here over here and in my back and let me step away from the camera so i can show you guys what i look like because i have to go number two so bad i just ate noodles with high sodium and it is time to use the bathroom so this is what i look like all stuffed like a potato i got stuff i got my triangle back here i got lateral boards too thin lateral boards i'm going to take this off and show you guys and then have my ab board in here and i also have two pads stacked for my sides so that i can get the snatch look because your sides heal last my nurse says your middle heals the first like here everything in the middle like my spine and then it heels outward so the sides are the last to heal and i got a boo boo so bad this faja my nurse provided for me it's a colombian faja and um it has a zipper that goes all the way to the back of my butt crack so i can go number two in it and i love that but i'm currently on my cycle so i'm wearing a underwear so i can have a panty liner on and a tampon in so i have to take everything off when i use the bathroom so i'm gonna show you what it looks like in a second i'm gonna talk y'all through it but i gotta use the bathroom Okay, that was that was intense. That was good. Um, yeah, sodium not good for you. I don't even know where to start. There's so much that I gotta cover. But first things first, I have to take this shot of baking soda and water because one of two things are happening right now. I wait too long to eat, and anytime that I wait too long to eat, I end up getting heartburn. It's been like that like all my life. Because then when I do eat, I eat fast. And that's another thing that triggers GERD and stuff like that. And I want to say three weeks ago is when I started seeing TikToks about this hack. And I was trying to avoid it for so long because I just know it's so nasty. And it is nasty. Literally tastes like feet. But it literally gets rid of it in an instant. And I can't wash it down with my water because I'm going to still taste it. So I have these gummy bears. So here's to the hourglass. Gross. For my top, I'm wearing the surgical post-op bra. And the bottom, I have a swimsuit YouTube. So don't demonetize me. All right, so with the Faja, it's super tight. And it will give you a Faja burn if you are not wearing a cami underneath. But I like long sleeves. And I'm in Chicago. It's really cold. So I need long sleeves. So I wear long sleeve bodysuits. And I'm about to probably do an unboxing on like my Instagram story and or Snapchat. When I open that, I can probably do like a little quick try on maybe. I don't know. Every time I take off the Faja, I get super itchy. While well, I was sitting on the toilet, constantly rubbing my whole entire body because it's super itchy so when i get my new faja i'm gonna make sure that it also has the zipper so i have the option of opening it all the way to minimize me having to take it off so often and be so itchy because it's very very much frustrating and annoying so when i do get itchy don't fast forward i'm gonna show you my results but i just want to go through everything so when i do get itchy i use this everything that i use and recommend will be in my amazon storefront which will be linked down in my description box it's like a mix of of benadryl and calamine lotion so calamine lotion is usually like when you get poison ivy you get chicken pox and stuff you'll use that but it'll have like a white residue this will give you a residue and it will be super flaky that's the downfall but it helps a lot so benadryl makes you sleepy and this does not sometimes i even use both of them and when i don't want to put this on like when i don't want to take off all my clothes like if i'm itchy without taking off all my clothes i will just get ice and if you don't have ice you can use like frozen peas or whatever and put it on your body where it is itching and it usually helps this time around if you don't know i got a bbl in 2019 and i only kept the faja on for about two months and i couldn't do it anymore due to the itching and the acid reflux i did not have a quick easy remedy for it nothing was really working so i would have acid reflux days at a time with the faja and i just thought that my health was way more important than wearing a tight garment so i just ditched it but this time i can do it so yeah benadryl and this and ice will help everybody's different some people have it some people don't so i'm gonna show you my results at one month i'm still swollen they say give yourself three months before you're like at your ideal shape and healing then you can stop technically wearing your faja but if you want like to optimize your results you're gonna want to wear this for as long as you can at least a year so 
I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna try because I ain't trying to do this again. Here are my results. This is like super tight and I wish it wasn't. But this is my stomach. Let me see if I can. This is what it looks like. This is my size. This is how tiny I am, not sucking in my stomach or anything. I'm still a little bit sore. And then this is my back, so they did all of this. My main thing when I went in was my breasts because my scars were horrible. They were super thick. They ended up getting super hard. Anybody who's ever got work done and I've ever showed, they're like, no, I've never seen something like that. He definitely needs to fix that. So I went in to go get that fixed and then I'm going under anesthesia. Anesthesia is type dangerous. Don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure doctors can't even tell you what's in it. So I was getting put under and I was like, if I'm gonna go under already for something like this, go ahead and take out all the fat that you can. My stomach ended up look like it healed swollen I was actually a pound less like I maintained the weight when I went in for my BBL when you get a BBL it's not a weight loss thing because they're just taking all that fat and they're putting it somewhere else so you should be the same size so I was the same weight when I came out but when I went in to get these looked at he looked at me and I was like yo I don't really like how I healed this stuff and he was like well you gained weight and I was like no I didn't like I'm literally a pound less than I was when I first came in why do I look like this so so yeah when we talked about this I was like can we just take everything out and like start fresh because I was starting to get love handles my belly was starting to be a little bit big so that's what we went to do he chiseled this it's pretty sore because like I said it's the last to heal but I feel like I have more of an hour body shape what are these called a wig thingy i haven't been on one of these i only stand on this at the surgery place i do not think that things are healthy i just feel like my proportions are right it doesn't matter but i'm sure since he took out fat i'll probably be like i don't know i don't i don't want to like underdo it but let's just say 120 and i am 4'11 so this is ideal for my body shape i am happy with this like if i had to be like this forever like if i couldn't get it any smaller i would do that my waist measurements right now is a 26 which is kind of concerning because i was 26 inches around my waist when i had my bbl so it's like mm. all my life i've had like a pudge underneath my belly button and with surgery i got rid of that i'm very happy with my body so far but this side is more swollen than this side and it's been like that my nurse said that it could be uneven lipo but we won't know until i'm fully healed but it could also just be that i need to compress it more it's just more swollen maybe he did more work on this side so i have to keep it compressed as much as possible compression oh my god compression works and you compress with lipo foams you compress with backboards ab boards all of that stuff anything that's putting pressure on your stomach while you're in a garment so yeah these are my results and now i'm gonna go through the whole day i took notes from first day of surgery to now so i'm gonna read you what i felt like and how i felt for the whole four weeks so far so as you can see it says surgery notes and i got a lot so let's get to it first let me sit down i'm gonna go through everything that i have on that table like everything that you need and all that stuff but for now i'm gonna walk you through how i felt for these four weeks by the way if you're wondering why i have two different hands it's because it took a really long time to do this and i knew that if i did my nails it would take all day and i wouldn't be able to get this video out to you guys so i sacrificed having one hand on one hand off i went for like the winter wonderland theme make sure y'all look out for that video but anyway that's the surgery note so surgery day i was crying when i realized that i was alone when i woke up i was nauseous this go around i was not nauseous at all the first time i did not need my nausea pills and i peed on myself with the female urinal so i ended up getting a female urinal this time because with my bbl i couldn't sit on my butt and i know they say like to pee sit on your butt it's fine but it's just a really weird feeling and then you pee on yourself because it's just like your bladder it just like goes everywhere and i don't like the feeling of that i don't like dirty i don't like like mentally physically i just don't like it i was like let me try to avoid that this time but i ended up peeing even with it on because it's like a certain method but then i got it down and i was fine but the problem when i washed it it got put in the dryer and you're not supposed to put it in the dryer because it'll shrink so the opening to let you pee with it on closed a little bit so it didn't fit 
right and it's paper let me show you guys it's paper so if you got it open and you're like struggling to put it up there like to get a good suction this starts folding in and then you're peeing and then it starts getting wet and then it's just yeah, so I ended up peeing with it and I didn't use it for long. But I did like the option of being able to throw it away. So I did try a few times until I just gave up. But it was convenient to be able to throw it away versus my sister got a female urinal. And she got like the plastic one where you can just like rinse it out and like use it again. But the problem with that is that you're going to need somebody to do it for you each time. Like if you're independent, if you're not going to really have somebody with you, I would not recommend that. Because then you're going to have to like keep rinsing it out and then you're like drugged up and you're supposed be sleeping and you're supposed to be doing this and you're supposed to be doing that so it becomes like a chore so i would not recommend hers but hers was like bigger hers was wider at the top hers is wider than this so that would not fit in a faja i would recommend and i put it on my amazon storefront a smaller one i saw a slimmer one on amazon and i didn't buy it because i didn't want to do the rinsing out thing but i should have just went with my gut because i feel like that would be so much more convenient because it's plastic so it's not gonna fold and i could have literally just like put it in my faja that would been convenient um what else first two bathroom trips i almost blacked out okay so yeah the first two times that i had to get up was bad <laughs> like i almost ended up blacking out but i was able to just like hurry up and get down and sit there i didn't get it on camera but if you watch my surgery vlog i don't know if it was like surgery day or if it was like one week post-op but it's definitely one of those videos where i show you guys and i explained it a little bit but now i'm going into detail about everything my doctor said that it was because i looked down and i feel like that was true and the medicine let's talk about the medicine they gave me a lot of medicine two antibiotics a narcotic for the pain yeast infection and nausea pill so there was a lot and trill came with me and she helped me with everything and we were both very confused because it's been a long time since my bbl and i don't remember struggling with the medications but then again i wasn't nauseous but i was eating and then when i went to miami for this i did not have it like really planned out at all so what they gave me is Amox, this is the antibiotic and they were huge white pills that came in here i had to take this twice daily and then the other antibiotic that i had to take were really tiny this is doxycycline this is the other one they stressed really bad that i could not have these at the same time because it would be way too strong for my stomach so they literally wrote out the times they were like 8 a.m 12 p.m it was just really strict and then i also have the oxy oh i still have one left this is narcotic they gave me i want to say like 10 or something yeah something like that and so yeah so i have these and then i also have in dan centron this is for the nausea and it said dissolve one in the mouth every eight hours is needed for nausea also had for the yeast fluconazole i don't know and you have to take one by mouth on day one on day seven and on day 10 so it was just a lot on top of having Tylenol, so I had Tylenol on the show yet as with the Tylenol as my sister got it and she just gave me a handful. And if you work, like if you work remote, my sister worked remote and so she couldn't be asleep as much as she wanted to take the Oxy. She was on Tylenol throughout the day. And so when I went to my appointments, I tried to take the Tylenol. I ended up passing out, I ended up throwing up. I'm gonna get to that. But long story short, my point is that it was a lot. So I kept getting it wrong. I didn't even take the full medicine. I didn't take all the medicines that I was supposed to take the first two days because it was hard to keep up with them and i was terrified of catching an infection because that's what the antibiotics were so you don't catch an infection i was terrified of that but i could not stop getting dizzy and throwing up and stuff you're supposed to walk every so often so you don't get a blood clot that's scary and i couldn't do it like i would get up as much as possible like my exercise was when i went to the bathroom and i sat back down like that was a lot for me this go around was super intense and i was so emotional, I kept crying because I just felt so needy. I'm really independent and it just, it was a lot for me mentally, emotionally, physically. And I knew that it would be a lot for Trill, but I warned her before, but she made me feel like everything was okay. And she kept like reassuring me that everything was fine and everything. It actually made her bond like so much closer, which we didn't even think was possible. After like, I want to say like the third day, I started to get a hang of the medicine. I was just taking everything together besides the antibiotics, but anything together would be too much for my stomach. Like it would just be too intense. So I would take every pill, like 
like an hour apart an hour to two hours apart so it would take up the whole entire day i would wake up to take medicine like it was so frustrating to have to eat round the clock because we was in an airbnb we was in a location that wasn't really close to many places like we kept having to order stuff which is so expensive to do so i'm gonna make i'm probably gonna make another video about like if you're going on a budget don't recommend going on a budget but it happened so i might do a video on that let's move forward so this is still the first day <laughs> and i have so much more notes to go through i'm probably gonna have to sum it up let me see it says every time i got up i felt better given i had pain medicine pain medicine okay so i guess i was in pain while i was sitting down but every time that i would sit up or get up be able to get up and move on my own i felt a lot more better with medicine in my system but i had to get the medicine way before i got up because if i got up before i took the medicine or before i ate like i would feel it i was super gassy like the whole time i don't know what that was about maybe like from the compression my acid reflux like I don't know what it was, but I did not experience that the first time. Maybe somebody can explain that to me. But I was like that for like the whole first week. Post-op day one, woke up and slept fine. I just had to pee. I brushed my teeth and I felt like fainting. So that was a lot for me. I ate cereal and yogurt and that was not enough instead of the percocet i took tylenol so yeah i ended up throwing up so we couldn't even do the whole massage because i fainted and the masseuse was scared that i was gonna faint because she does her massages with the patient standing up so that all the fluids can like get pushed out and stuff versus my nurse now i don't have any drains or anything for it to come out but she does everything while i'm laying down but she's trained from colombia and they the best of the best that's why they call colombia fajas and stuff like that but i think it's weird because then you guys the bbl brazilian butt lift i don't know but like out the country they know what they doing so i wasn't able to do that i said my body was super sore it felt like i just started carrying 30 pounds overnight i don't remember that but i could see that i got to clean up a bit in the shower they said from under my breast and down i couldn't get my breast wet he ended up putting tape on me for the first time around the incisions which he did not do the first time and my scar looks amazing i just took the tape off like a few days ago and i was just like and my sister was like why didn't he do this the first time like it looks great i'm so excited for these to heal it's gonna take a little bit longer i did not feel any pain from my breast augmentation like i did when i actually got the lift initially because i had an implant so i feel like it was the implant that gave me the pain but this time it was all about just tightening everything and it did not hurt but also i feel like why it did not hurt is because of the tape gave it like extra support because when i took the tape off a few days ago it felt like my chest dropped like i still feel pain to this day like randomly sore every now and then and i feel like now they're starting to drop which i'm kind of sad about because i kind of like when they're like all like up and plump and stuff like when it looks like you're wearing like a push-up bra or something so i'm gonna keep trying to like keep my sports bra on and keep them lifted as much as possible so they don't sag she help me bathe because i could not look and i can't look down because i was like nauseous and stuff like that too so she helped me and it was very intense it felt like super foreign uh ate almost a whole chipotle bowl and i felt like that helped me not pass out so everybody likes chipotle i'm not a fan of it because i've had it a lot and then once i eat something a lot and then i have a bad experience it just throws me off so i haven't had many good experiences with chipotle the last few times that i had it but they wanted that so i got a chipotle bowl and i was eating like i haven't ate before i had such an appetite most likely because my body was using a lot of energy i could not believe that i ate all of that because i usually cannot eat that much and that helped me not pass out so after i ate that and i took my medicine i did not feel nauseous or anything so that was good my stomach was bubbling more than usual and i started getting cramps slash control traction like feelings back to back i had to go number two and i was terrified i felt like i gave birth had to take off and put the faha back on alone lots of work so if you watch my one week post that vlog you can see me take it off and put it on for the first time this was post op day two and Tra had already been like running around and helping me so much and she was super exhausted because not only was she helping me i had to bring my daughter along so she was keeping an eye out for her as well and so my independence kicked in and i was like you know what i'm gonna try to do it and i did it but it took a lot of energy so i was also very emotional about not being able to be mobile it's very frustrating going from being able to move however you want and not even thinking twice about it to 
being limited and being sick all the time i remember when i was pregnant i was throwing up my first two trimesters and i think i got dizzy or sick like one time during my third and i would just start busting out in tears because i was just so frustrated i was so tired of being sick i was so tired of being tired i was crying to trail like i'm so sorry for being needy and she's like it's okay like i understand you're fine like you're good trust me and i'm like i just love you like you didn't even have to do this but you did this and she's like of course like you don't have to worry about it so i just kept crying she's like bro why are you crying and i'm like i don't know i'm just so grateful like why did i meet you sooner it was like one of those moments but it was so funny because i think the same day i told my sister like bro i had to go number two it was so annoying she's like bro i literally have an attitude right now because i took one this morning and it did not come out it was so hard why did they not give us stool softener so for my video they have prescribed stool softeners and i did not use them at all i was fine but this go around like i said everybody's different and it's crazy because like whatever happened one time may not happen the next time and vice versa i needed it this time so she went to walgreens and she got a bunch and we took them and the next time that i had to go number two it came out like butter everything was fine definitely recommend you just having them on the side but like i said if you're on a budget i'm gonna make a whole nother video don't get anything until you need it because there's a lot of people who say that they got something and they ended up not needing it so so on day two, I ended up eating a bagel, a banana, and a mini Powerade, which I did not feel like was enough. It's good because all those things are low sodium, but my body wanted and needed more food. Um, refused to take any antibiotics or pain meds without eating more because I just knew. Listen to your body, guys. If you feel like you're about to get sick, if you take this medicine because you didn't eat, eat more. Like, please eat more or just don't take it. Like, just try not to because you are gonna put yourself through hell those medicines are not no joke and this day is the day that i had chills i kept having constantly like heat and cold flashes like i thought that i had the flu this day i just felt like when i was cold i was gonna tap out like if i closed my eyes i went to sleep i was gonna be done with like my body was like giving up because like i said the first two days it was hard for me to keep up with the medicine and stuff and like my body was just not wanting me to walk not wanting me to really do anything it was intense my eyes were sensitive to light but i also feel like i was up a lot versus sleeping i didn't sleep as much but when i finally was able to sleep i turned off all the lights i felt like i was overstimulated once i turned everything off and i put like a cold towel on me i felt so much better the next day which brings me to day three got out of bed used the bathroom cleared my drain by myself washed my face by myself at this point it's been about 10 hours since i've had a painkiller so that's really really good on day three i'm fine you have to have somebody to say about two days post op but i would say try to get somebody to stay with you around the clock for at least three days because your body's gonna be going through a lot and up until about like six days to be checking in on you to see if they can like physically do certain things because like i couldn't do certain things like i would still need help grabbing things i would suggest putting things like lower level because you know we're like hunched back and stuff and we can't fall anything can happen literally so if you can find somebody to be your caretaker and they gotta like call off and they might not be able to be with you try to get it for three days like be like three days minimum but i need you to like check in with me up until like six days because it's very intense so glad i didn't get a bbl because sleeping on my butt or on my stomach again I was crying, I was so emotional, I hated that. I couldn't go through that again, but this time the bed wasn't that comfortable. Like having to alter the bed pillows because it wasn't thick enough or it wasn't high enough or it was too hot because we had to put plastic over it so I wouldn't bleed, which I never bled, but just to be on the safe side so we wouldn't ch get charged for the room again. It was a lot and my butt hurt really bad. It was stinging like the bottom of my butt and I was like, why would they go in there? I don't know if you like ended up getting fat from there like, in your butt crack. The top of your butt crack is open. But they use it when they do your massages. They push all the fluid out and it squirts out through your butt crack. It was so weird when I finally saw it. <laughs> and I put it in my surgery day video or my post-op video of that process. But it was burning. And when they told me that that's where it comes out, I was like, oh, I knew it. I knew something was burning there. Everyone was like, no, you should be fine. I don't know why it's burning right there but it's because they have a hole there so it's a fresh wound but okay so back where i was it was 10 hours since i've had a painkiller no headache so like i said that sleeping and getting rest was very important and beneficial for the person taking care of you i recommend them being a 
able to know how to cook or just being able to like run and grab your food whenever like as much as possible like make sure that you are getting fed around the clock make sure you always have like some kind of snack like a yogurt or a banana or something because like i said you need food in your system for these medicines to be able to sit in your stomach correctly so while you're sleeping they should be like cleaning sheets if needed changing stuff getting you food prepping your food making your process as easy as possible when i was out of the faja because i was waiting for it to wash because the washer in the airbnb was trash i don't know about washing you can't really tell if it washed it right but drying it did not dry you had to keep putting it in for more and more cycles it was like half broken so it took a long time for my faja to get dried which is a stage one which i feel like you could put it in the dryer because it's already like very stretchy material but but it was hard for me to put it back on i ended up falling asleep because it was like late at night when i took my shower so i ended up waking up like at like one in the morning which is like three hours after it was supposed to be done and it was a struggle to get it and i had like crazy shivers and i could only imagine because i remember before i got my bbl watching videos of people who got their bbl out the country which i didn't take note of at the time but out the country they usually skip the first stage faja so stage one stage two stage three they usually skip stage one which is like the looser compression and they put you in a stage two which is what i'm in now and it's tight way tighter so they would be like oh i took a shower and i couldn't get the faja on to save my life i needed help like i needed people to put it on me like i was freaking out and i was scared that i was never going to be able to get back in because you just swell up so much when you're out of your faja and i'm sitting out of my faja now and i just feel myself getting more and more uncomfortable and stiff like my back is feeling a little bit stiff right now you feel most comfortable in your faja but me because i have GERD it's a little bit uncomfortable especially like when it's digging into your size and stuff like that so there's ways to avoid stuff like that but it's just a process y'all ain't nothing easy about surgery don't let anybody tell you otherwise don't let anybody be like oh it's the easy way out no it's not it is hard hard work it's hard maintenance so post up day three i was finally able to go downstairs and clean up a little bit so you can see i'm progressively getting better and that was mentally super satisfying for me to like physically feel my daily improvements so i put notes and tips in here too so i said put chuck pads in the bathroom and everything within reach so like when i use the bathroom for example like if i was standing up to use the bathroom your incisions might start leaking or your drain or something emptying your drain you might get blood places so it's just good to just have chuck pads in the bathroom specifically because you're going to constantly be going in there so it's easier to clean up um and i said the more i ate clean and low sodium the better that i ate so i'm pretty sure i ate something like high sodium and i felt disgusting and i listened to my sister because she had her surgery two days before me so she ended up going on a budget as well and she pre- ordered a bunch of stuff from walmart but like tv dinners things that you would just heat up throw in the microwave throw in the oven which those things are really high in sodium but she just switched her mind real quick she's like i feel like crap i don't want to do this i need low sodium so i was strict on that but the more that i ate the better that i felt granted your body's supposed to feel better anyways because it's not junk for you it's like really good for you that could be it as well that could play a part but it helps you heal better when you eat cleaner it says i took the perks back to back the first two to three days and then i started taking half I probably took like one whole one half and half and then after that i was taking tylenol even with eating clean and being full and finally being on track with my medicine i still passed out during the massage i passed out for every single massage for the first week not physically passed out because i would catch myself and like lay down before i would physically actually black out but yeah each time i got there but my doctor ended up coming in and i told him that i was hearing ringing in my ears at one point and he was like that tells me that you're dehydrated and you're still not eating enough so he kept telling me to eat and then when i finally listened eating helped a lot and i feel like i was passing out because i was standing up and it was just like really intense i'm fine when they were doing my back but your stomach when they start massaging is more sensitive and sore it's intense so i guess they told me like that's why it's just a super intense process but when i got my first massage from my chicago nurse she does her massages laying down like i said and i did not pass out i did not feel the urge to pass out or anything so i feel like maybe if they did my massages laying down i would have been better but who knows if i would have been less inflated i put note tip make sure you're constantly eating and set timer for meds so post up day four woke up at 8 a.m made myself breakfast removed the garment alone showered alone did need help with my compression socks so that's why i said see if you can 
get somebody to come and check up on you if they're not able to be with you around the clock 24 hours i'm noticeably quicker can do more felt more alive after eating ihop steak and eggs so yeah i felt amazing still gassy i didn't have nearly as much fluid as i did with my bbl yeah so i didn't drain that much no don't recommend bringing kids it's very boring for them you need all the attention from your caretaker unless the ticket why can't I talk unless the caretaker is also entertaining the kids taking them out while you're like sleeping and stuff like that which I definitely recommend if possible it's going to be extremely boring for them and they're going to be busy I notice I get headaches towards the night the more I do the more I'm prone to getting one try to get lots of rest as much as possible no head pillows are super clutch yes so I had the neck pillow that you wear when you're at the airport I had that one and I was using winters and trills so clutch definitely recommend post up day five Five. Notice my lower back is finally flat with the triangle. So day five, we put the triangle. We've been had the triangle, but my back was super flat. On top of it looking like I gained a lot of weight on my sides and my stomach, my back has always been like another one of my like kind of insecurities because it's just a weird shape. Um, let me see what it looks like now. It looks pretty flat, but you see how it's not like an in dip right here. My doctor was telling me basically it's a bone. It's a bone right there. So that's why I can't like go it. But I was telling him like no take this out like what is going on so he did like blow it a lot and right now that's how I know I'm swollen because day five it looked so much smoother it looks so much better than what it does now even though right now it doesn't look bad but like this was like more compressed and in like it looks like a cute little dip right there and I was like ah! period let's see let's see let's see post-op day six that's when they took out the drain and it was so painful it did not hurt the first time he did it so fast and he put pressure on the place where it was coming out but this time it was pain it felt like ripping tape off of your skin post-op day seven was the last massage and it lasted longer and harder so for the first six days i got my massages at the clinic and they were very short i paid 350 for five massages and i swear they weren't even like 30 minutes i think they're only supposed to be 30 minutes but like my last massage was like 10 minutes like she barely touched me and the one where the nurse comes to you she was charging only like 80 dollars, and she did it for an hour and she she was more aggressive i definitely felt the difference between the two i'm glad that i did not have her for the first day post-op because that would have been bad. Um, my first post-op massage was so much better because she was very light-handed. This nurse, I asked her about it and she said it's really not necessary to have so much force if you know what you're doing, I guess, but yeah. So she was very thorough. She did my front, my back. I almost passed out. I kept trying to be a trooper because I love the way the massages feel. Like it's like a, it's a good pain. So I ended up being near passing out three times, but the third time my time was done. So she ended up leaving. It was intense, but it felt really, really good. At the airport, the airport was smooth i had a wheelchair assistance but my butt felt super sore from like sitting all day and when i got back to chicago so like my lips and my face was like super pale but the minute that i touched back down in chicago i started to get my color back so it started to turn back pink and i thought that was really weird but i just wanted to note it so yeah that was my whole first week post-op and now i'm in week two two week post-op the more compression the better that i felt that's when i started to get my massages like on day 10 or something like that and she recommended me to buy more foams so foams look like this and they go on your stomach they usually recommend for every doctor is different i could see why somebody would recommend three but one goes on your stomach one goes on your side one goes on your back one goes on your other side so you're like stuffing your faja literally she recommended being in a stage two two weeks post-op and my doctor was very strict on not getting into a stage two until four to six weeks i believe it is but at that time i was literally swimming in my faja so i only had four starting off and she recommended a second pack each one was like 25 dollars for a pack of four so i bought another pack of four and and it made a huge difference while I was waiting for my stage two. She didn't have some on hand, so we had to wait for my next appointment to get my stage two faja, which is the one that you saw me wear in the beginning of the video. It worked, so I got it quick, and I used 
I think like six or seven out of eight. I just kept stacking them as much as possible. And when I tell you my whole body was like super duper snatched and this is called compression, putting foams and stuff. And it also protects your body from the material of your faja. And like your skin is like super fragile and it can rip and cause burns and bruises and all that stuff. So this helps a lot when she put me in the stage two in the next appointment which was like two days later i couldn't fit in these because it was super super tight mind you my stage one five is getting stuff with seven of these and a triangle that i made out of my chuck pads my lateral boards i didn't need it but i use it with my stage two faja because i don't want to use these because they're so thick and my clasps are like loosening up and breaking i don't know what's up with that but the more that i put in there i realized that the faja actually stretches i'm gonna get into that in a second but also my ab board some people use backboards my doctor did not recommend that i never used it don't know what the difference would be but i would love for my back to be contoured so maybe i will invest in one if you guys have used one or you guys feel like that makes a difference let me know because i am one month post-op out of like the three months my body is still very moldable so if i stay out of this faja i can very much heal swollen and i'm not going to get the optimized results my waist is at like a 26 and my goal because i'm so tiny is to get it to a 24 so i have to be compressed as much as possible so i have to be very careful and eat small portions basically like follow all directions be very careful and specific during this whole process to minimize the chance of me getting acid reflux i want to do like a budgeting thing but when i was there we got pads because that's what they recommend when you get like lipo or bbl for the blood for incisions my sister got like a huge pack and we split it halfway she probably used more than me but i only used like two or three and i actually cut one in half i used it for like my incision when i took a shower and i didn't have any more of the surgical pads that they give you they gave me some for my breasts which barely leaked but this came in clutch my faha has three hooks and when i first put it on i was on the first hook and i could not fathom getting down to the last hook i was like there's no way that i'm gonna be able to this is a size medium by the way and without any of the boards or anything like if i want to go out to eat or something and i don't want to look blown up i don't want my triangle in because it takes away from your waistline i'll put my ab board in so i don't heal like wrinkled or anything like that but with my boards and everything i'm on the last hook with my sides like i noticed that like they're not really contoured at all and it feels very loose now i told my nurse the other day and i'm like there's no way that my body got that much small in a week people keep buying new fajas back to back and they're feeling so confident and so happy that they're going down but i just measured my stomach you have to measure yourself before you get a faja to know which size faja to get and if you need it customized so when we measured it that's how we knew i was 26 inches 12 days post-op so not even two weeks i was 26 inches and when i measured myself again i was 26 inches like a week or something later and i got to the last hook without anything in it so i was like what's going on like it had to have stretched and she's like yeah they stretch then i was like okay i told her my ideal results i told her that i want a 24 inch waist i want my sides clenched and i want my back right so she's like i recommend a tributo faja which is like the almighty god fajas but i didn't want to recommend that to you at first because of your acid reflux and these are like super 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 tight so i went on the website just to see she's like but if you want that 24 we can try to get you there but you're gonna need one of those fajas so i went to the website to like see what the hype's about i did like a lot of research and stuff and they have a lot of info on their website so if you have any questions about fajas even if you cannot afford it because they're very pricey i would go to their website and look at their uh, faqs and questions and stuff but they help me they basically i don't know if they're all like the same material but basically they say that they do stretch they can stretch up to like 10 inches i am very glad that my nurse kept it 100 because she could have very well been like that's not the fajas there's no way that a stretch like you're fine or whatever the case but she kept it real like yeah they can stretch so that makes sense because the first day that i had this faja on that she put it on me i could not breathe like it was very very painful i was like there's no way i could sleep in this but i was just like in my head like bro i need these results i am going to be super depressed if i don't get these results because this is like my second go around with lipo i tried but i woke up in the middle of my sleep like two hours in my sleep and i could not go back to sleep i ended up taking it off i'm super tired don't want to do it but i am super afraid of not getting my results so i woke up and i grabbed my stage one faja and i ended up stuffing with foams again 
all eight foams i think i'm pretty sure i put eight foams my triangle my ab board because i was like okay when she sees me again she's gonna be mad because i'm not putting it on but when i tell you i took it off because that my stage one doesn't have a hole for you to go number two so i had to take it off because i had to use the bathroom the next morning and my stomach was tiny super tiny when i ended up taking off the stage one i don't remember i think i had to take a shower that night but i didn't really see much of a difference but when i took off the stage one faha after like really compressing and like being able to see the difference between the two i felt like i saw more results when i had in all these foams so compression is very very important no matter what when i'm lazy if i don't have trouble putting on my faha and i don't feel like putting these in i notice a difference when i take it off so try to put your foams in it's very frustrating very annoying most times like i feel like breaking out of tears because i don't want to wear this i don't want to sleep uncomfortable i don't want to look extra big for no reason when i don't have to i'm very lucky that i stay in chicago now and it's very cold so i do need the layers anyways but i could not fathom living in like a hot area and having to wear this like it would be crazy but i'm very lucky so it's fine i stopped reading my notes because this video is getting so long finally my doctor said three weeks so i wrote in my calendar that i can start scar cream so this is the scar cream that i am using very pricey over 100 dollars and i only bought it because he had gave this to me like a smaller version but he had gave this to me when i had went in for him to look at my breast in the beginning of the year for i went for a checkup and they got super soft very fast and i even noticed them fading a little bit and i only used it for like two weeks and they went down so i stopped using it because i knew that we were gonna go in and fix it and like revise everything so i was like yeah i definitely need it this time plus the scars from the incisions and stuff oh my god i'm getting so swollen by the minute i don't know if you guys can tell but they are circles instead of slits when i had the video they were like quick little slits and now they're circles and they're like a lot bigger and they fade it very well after my bbl but i just didn't feel like that was gonna be the case this time so i was like yeah 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 need this so i started a few days ago and i'm gonna keep you guys updated on my scars but as far as my chest i just took off this tape like i said a few days ago it was like beautiful my scars look like my skin just a little bit red so i was just like so flabbergasted because it did not look like that even two weeks post up my first time but it looked good and i feel like now i feel like oxygen has a play with that because i have not been outside because chicago is very windy very cold i'm not used to that I've been down south for so long and i just don't like this so i try to stay inside have not been outside so that is not a factor i remember when i first got my breast done i was at, in miami a few weeks later and you know the rays from the sun can go through your clothes especially if it's like thin and obviously i was wearing like fashion over and stuff like that so that could have had an effect but it's not the case this time and they are getting darker let me show you guys like a side so this is what it looks like it's still red this was dang near invisible when i first took off the tape but now it's starting to get like a darker shade of red and like you can see it dark brown right there the scar is like here here and it's like a lollipop and down the line here you can barely see anything but this right here is starting to get a little bit dark the middle from where they connect the cuts that is the last thing that needs to heal so my nurse recommended me to start it in about a week when that is fully healed and there's no more scabs on there so i'm still waiting to start it on my breast but we are already starting it here and i also have an incision in my back Oh, dot right there so i put it there my sides i have an incision on my pubic area on my butt crack and yeah i put them all there so we'll see i'll update you guys on that i feel like this is very informative and so if you've been watching this to this point without skipping put cheers to recovery put that in the comments so i know that you loyal and you 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 tuned in trigger warning it's nasty don't look at the screen i'm gonna show you guys but this is what it looked like when it came off and it actually doesn't look as bad in the camera but it was just disgusting like it was nasty and i did not want to touch it you see green on it purple black like crusty blood and like it just looked so gross my only concern is like the cleavage i feel like this is like wider because why is it taking up some of this space like this one's perfect 
but this one has always been like taking I don't know if it's swollen right there. I don't know if she said it's too early to determine anything because rest takes longer. And then I just took off the tape, so it might be a different ball game. So we're just gonna wait. But I feel like as far as like the scars, it's fine. My breast was saggier and one was noticeably bigger than the other before I went in. So he was supposed to fix that. So I have good hopes because after surgery, they were stuck on my chest, but it was cute. Like they look petite and I was always like debating on even if I wanted boobs or not. So after post-op like it was just so cute and up and tight and perky and i'm so happy about that so i have a good feeling like it's not gonna sag too much but i'm gonna keep you guys updated let me know if you want a two month post-op if not i'm just gonna wait till three months because i feel like everything is pretty much repetitive i don't want to be repetitive but yeah i think my next surgery video would be three months post that but i do want to do like a budget video let me know if you have any other questions my amazon storefront for surgery supplies will be in the description but i am going to do a video on like things that you do need things that you don't need based on my experience he said that the only way that i would like get smaller up here is to lose wait so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it was very informative it was very very long one month but we got this i got this this time and if you're thinking about getting surgery i hope that i helped you if you're not good with following directions if you're very stubborn don't recommend getting something like this because it's very strict just like if you was to like work out be on a meal plan or something like you have to have self-discipline but yeah i love you next gang and i'll see you in my next video bye